What is this cloud thing that people are talking about? In this video, we're gonna go over the basics of cloud computing, the advantages of using cloud, as well as the different types of deployments that you can have when you're using the cloud. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. If this is the first time that we're meeting, hello, my name is John Good, and here on my channel, I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon so you don't miss future content. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below in the comments section for the YouTube algorithm. If you like this training and you wanna see more training videos, head on over to my website at johngood.com for full training courses. All right, let's get into the video. Now, I want you to think about your environment today or over the past 10 years. When we had a business need in companies, what would happen? Well, we would go buy a server and we would install whatever services that we needed. And then we would go ahead and deploy that server into our network. Some of the problems that came along with that were we had the full cost of the server that we had to take on, the services, any personnel or training that had to go along with that for the lifetime of that business need. And we were really restricted on our flexibility in case we had to scale up or scale down with that need. Enter cloud computing. With cloud computing, we don't have to buy servers and services ahead of time. We essentially get to rent our services or servers from a cloud provider as we need them. There are four common services that you typically will get from a cloud service provider. The first is compute power. A virtual machine is the first thing that we can use compute power for. And this allows for immediate creation of virtual machines. So we can immediately deploy them and we don't need to install an operating system on a physical server. If you look here on the screen, this is kind of what a virtual machine setup looks like. So we have this hypervisor that we need and we install that on top of the host OS. So maybe Windows Server or Linux or something like that. But you would install a hypervisor and then you install the virtual machines on top of that. Now with containers, the second use that we can use compute power for, these don't require a guest operating system. You basically use a standard runtime environment to execute applications, and this is very fast. Docker is a really good example of a container environment. And we can have multiple containers on a machine and they're very easy to move. So you can see here that we don't actually have to install an operating system on those where a virtual machine would actually be an operating system. Then the last use is serverless computing. Now with serverless computing, we're running applications without managing a server. So basically what happens is the application is broken into a bunch of functions that run when they're triggered by an action. So this is really good for automating tasks and there's less cost because with the serverless computing, you're only getting charged when these functions activate. Whereas with virtual machines and containers, there's idle time when they're just sitting there waiting to perform some kind of action. So with these pictures that I've drawn here, these are the different basically topographies of what they look like. The other uses that we can do in the cloud include storage, just like hosting a file or a database, you pay for what you need as far as storage costs. We can do networking for secure connections between the cloud and your company. And then we can also do analytics for visualizing telemetry and performance data. Now there's a whole bunch of different benefits that we're gonna go over for cloud. So let's strap in and get ready. Cloud computing can be extremely cost-effective compared to doing things the old way because you're only paying for what you need. You don't have to pay ahead of time for let's say equipment and potentially trying to future-proof yourself by buying equipment maybe that's a little bit more than what you need. Cloud computing is also scalable. You can scale it in a few different ways. So you can do vertical scaling and this is called scaling up. And this is basically when you're increasing the resources on an existing server. So maybe you need more RAM, maybe you need more CPU power, you're scaling up. You can also do horizontal scaling, which horizontal scaling is scaling out. And this allows you to add more servers. So maybe you wanna add load balancing and the ability to process all these requests among a bunch of different servers. You can scale out. And cloud computing is also elastic. 
So you can add or remove resources based on your workload and what you need. So for instance, if you have a website and you have a whole bunch of traffic at one point, it spikes up, you can actually scale that out and make it elastic so you have those additional resources to cover that spike. Cloud computing is also current. So using cloud, you can eliminate some of those IT tasks that can cause operational and security issues like updating patches because you can rely on the cloud provider to do that. Cloud computing is very reliable. You have things like fault tolerance, disaster recovery, and data backups that are extremely easy to configure. Cloud computing has a global presence. So a lot of these providers, they have data centers all over the globe, and that makes it easy for people all around the world to access your data at good speeds. And what about security? Well, with cloud computing, you don't have to worry about the physical security really, because the actual vendor, they're going to worry about the physical security to the data centers, where you just have to worry about the digital security. You know, access controls to your data, is the data encrypted, and all your different requirements as it relates in the virtual world. Now, I'm not gonna go super in depth on these different compliance requirements, but these are some different ones that exist and this video is specifically geared towards Azure. So these are gonna be the ones that are compatible for Azure. But you have things like the Criminal Justice Information Services, Cloud Security Alliance, CSA STAR certification, GDPR, HIPAA, NIST Cybersecurity Framework, and UK Government G Cloud. So just some different compliance requirements that you can meet with using Azure. Now let's talk about economies of scale. So what is economies of scale? Well, think of it this way. The larger you get, the ability you have to lower your cost per unit, okay? So think about these cloud service providers. They are massive. They have these big data centers. As they get larger, they can handle more customers and the data per customer goes down. So these cloud providers, assuming they do this, they can pass on the savings to you, hopefully, as a customer. Capital expenditure versus operational expenditure. So CapEx is the money that you spent up front for your infrastructure, and then its value decreases over time. One of the benefits with capital expenditure is that you can actually deduct those expenses from your taxes over time. Think about those things that you would have to purchase. Things like data center costs, tooling, personnel costs to install and maintain everything. And then capital expenditure or CapEx is great when you have fixed costs or you really need to budget things out ahead of time. Operational expenditure is where you pay for services or products as you need them, but you actually can only deduct this from your taxes in that same year. Now, this is where cloud providers are at because you pay for what you need as you go and operational expenditure is considered agile because you can adjust. Now there's three different cloud deployment models that you can choose from. First is public cloud, then we have private cloud, and then hybrid cloud. So let's go ahead and jump into the public cloud here. The public cloud is where you use a service provider such as Microsoft Azure or Amazon AWS, and you would put everything into the public cloud. What are the advantages? Flexible scale, you can adjust what you need without purchasing additional equipment. You also get the pay-as-you-go pricing, so there's no capital expenditure or CapEx costs. A provider owns the maintenance and updates of the hardware. That can be a big deal. And then there's a low technical barrier to entry. So you don't need a lot of technical knowledge in order to get involved with a public cloud. What are the disadvantages? Well, if you have unique security requirements, that can be a real challenge for using a public cloud. Also, if there's government or legal requirements, depending on which cloud service you use, that could cause some issues as well. You also get less control over the hardware and services. So it can actually be harder to maintain some of these legacy applications or services that you might need. And we have the private cloud. Now the private cloud is when your company within its data center hosts its own cloud. So instead of using a provider like Microsoft, you're using your internal company's data center. Now, what are the advantages? Well, this is easier to maintain some of those legacy applications. You have more control over what happens. You do have control of security as well. 
which that can be a good or a bad thing depending on how mature your organization is. But it also allows for stricter security so you can meet some of those unique compliance requirements. Now, what are the disadvantages? Well, you own the CapEx costs. So if you have to buy a server or some piece of hardware, you've got to own that. It's less agile, so you can't just scale up by hitting a button. So that can be challenging. And then it requires that technical expertise to install and maintain everything. So that can be costly as well. And then we have the hybrid cloud. Now this is a combination of the public cloud and the private cloud. That can actually provide a lot of advantages. For instance, you can control those legacy applications that are unique, but then if you have something that's just standard, you can actually put it up in the cloud. You also have that agility to scale the cloud needs as you go. And then you have that overall increased flexibility for your needs. Now the disadvantages, this can be a little bit more costly because you have those CapEx needs for those you know, legacy applications and things that you have to host within your private cloud. And it can actually be more complicated to set up and manage because you have to make sure the two kind of talk together depending on what you're doing. Now, when it comes to types of cloud services, there's a few different types that you might get exposed to. You have infrastructure as a service, IaaS. You have platform as a service, PaaS. And then we have software as a service, SaaS or SaaS. The first is infrastructure as a service. With this, you have complete control over the hardware that your applications run on. Think of it like this. The cloud provider basically says, this is your IP address, log in. You have complete control of it. Now, remember that that means you also have to maintain the operating system. You have to patch things, you have to fix things. If there's middleware or software that has to be taken care of, you've got to take care of that. You have complete control basically over that box that sits in the provider's data center. What are some common uses for infrastructure as a service? Well, if you want to migrate some of your workloads from physical to cloud or all of them, then you could do that. If you need somewhere for test and development, you can do that as well. It's easy to deploy and scale. And then if you need storage, backup, and recovery, you can avoid some of the complexities that come along with that by using the infrastructure as a service model. With platform as a service, it provides you a platform to build, test, and deploy software applications without having to worry about the infrastructure. So some of the common uses would be development of application frameworks or analytics or business intelligence services. So with this, this is basically, you have a server somewhere, but you only have to worry about the applications that you're putting onto it. So the platform that you're putting onto the infrastructure. With software as a service or SaaS, this is where you have software applications that are hosted by a service provider. Typically, these are gonna be subscription-based type applications. So things like Office 365 or Skype. And basically with these, you don't really have to maintain anything outside of maybe your settings within the application. The provider, they're gonna update the software application. They're gonna update the operating system patches of the un underlying operating system. So it's really important to understand these different types of models and the responsibility where it sits, right? So you have on-premise where that's going to be, you have complete control of everything. That's the traditional way of doing things. Then you have infrastructure as a service. Remember, you're given a box and you can remote in, you have complete control of that box and the provider of the cloud, they're going to do the physical security and the other stuff like that. And you have your platform as a service where you can build on top of a server, but you don't have to maintain the server operating system. Cloud provider is gonna do that. Then you have software as a service, where you're given an application and the cloud provider, they're gonna control you know, everything for the server, the operating system, they're gonna patch all that stuff, they're gonna patch the application, and you're just controlling what happens within the application. Question of the day, which types of cloud services have you used or are you aware of already? Have you used infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, maybe a SaaS, a software as a service solution? Let me know down in the comments below. Remember to smash the thumbs up button to like this video, leave a comment and subscribe. If you like this training and you want full courses that are uninterrupted and just straight training information, head on over to my website at johngood.com. And until next time, I will see you later.